Okay. And um, I just have a pretty basic question. Is this your first time in Ireland? Yeah. First time? Yeah. Do you like this nice green everyone's, island? <laughs> everyone's lovely. Uh, I looked out the window and I, and I made sure I looked at, saw the green. Yeah. It was delightfully delicious. Everyone's been uh, really cool. I've only been inside the hotel. Um, but I, I've always wanted to come, and I'm glad I'm here. I, I, I definitely want to come back and yeah. explore more. As a kind of tourist. <laughs> yeah, you, you grew up here? Uh, no, no, I'm Polish. I came oh, here okay. two years ago, so. <laughs> oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, the accent is kicking oh. in. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, you're Polish? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, uh, Jacob uh, is supposed to be Polish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if we're talking about Polish, uh, oh, my name is Jacob. I might put another question here. <laughs> Do you know that in Fantastic Beasts, there's actually like loads of mentions related to Poland. Let's say when you were uh, getting the loan in the bank, you gave Pontki. Pontki, yeah. Yeah, to the banker. Yeah. I, don't, I can't remember that he actually taken. Never mind. And you know, like Jacob, as the character you're playing, his yeah. surname is Kowalski, which yeah. is the most popular surname. It's like Smith in Poland. It's really? exactly like. Yeah. So what's your what's your opinion about it? Did you know that like there's so much Polish in Fantastic Beasts? Because in Harry Potter series there was like no mention in like there was no like any Polish surname. There was no Polish character. Uh, like Polish fans are actually like so mad. But are you? But what's your, what's your opinion? Did you even know that there's like so much Polish happening in Fantastic Beasts? Like I heard that there was a Quentin Kowalski actually in the um, in some of the books. Oh, no, the on Pottermore. Yeah, short story. Short story, oh, yeah, okay. For the World Cup. Did, did JK okay. write that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's for the uh, um, for the World Cup. Uh, uh, right. 2014. He's yeah, supposed to be like a great Quidditch player. Yeah, yeah, yeah Quidditch. Yeah, 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 Quidditch. So was a bit Quidditch. Yeah, American yeah. team. So, well, may maybe uh, maybe Jacob. Uh, well, I thought you know, Queenie, <laughs> Queenie, Jacob. Maybe Queenie's kid is Quentin? Yeah. You know, I thought maybe... Uh, maybe maybe grandson, yeah. probably grandson. Right, exactly. Yeah. I, was, yeah. I was kind of connecting the dots with that. I never talked about but, that. But, uh, <laughs> you yeah, know, Kowalski is cool because you have all those uh, war movies where they're always like, Kowalski, get out of here! <laughs> he's always, the, he's always the, the grunt, the, the everyman that they bring in. Kowalski will do it. We need someone to go over the hill and kill them, all the people over there. But it's treacherous. Kowalski, get in here. You know, like, <laughs> all right, I'll do it. <laughs> so like that, it's that character um, who, and I love that man. It's like such an iconic movie character. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, there's a scene in the trailer uh, that always stuck out to me was when Jacob says, "I, I really want to be a wizard." Oh, yeah. wizard. It's not in the film, but I noticed that uh, when you said it, uh, was that kind of like an improv type? Yeah, moment? Totally. Just, like, it just because it's like we just swept up and kind of like the magic of everything. Well, they let us on the first day we came there. Um, I was, we thought that it was very precious, and but because it didn't come from novels that she was just writing and changing every day herself, they said, yeah, play, do whatever you want. So. I would improv all the time, and that was one of them. Yeah, it was, it really yeah. like it was just like a kind of just like, oh, we're welcome back. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then it became that little improv, hmm. um, w which was probably on a rehearsal. We probably didn't even know we were being recorded. That became the ad campaign. You know? Yeah. So it's, it's funny. <coughs> it's funny how these little things suddenly become how they're selling the film. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. Uh, and there were a lot of little great, great improvs um, that made it into the, into the movie. And they really allowed us to, to contribute and from day one, man. I, I felt like every scene had a little bit of, uh, my favorite was the giggle water. I mean, that, that wasn't in the script. That's like, I love that bit. It's so good. So every scene has something like that. And there was some... Um, <coughs> Did you, were you a big fan of Harry Potter before you joined, I suppose, the, exp the Expanded Universe? Yeah, I, um, I was, uh, I grew up in the 80s, so I was Star Wars. Yeah. And, Fan um, What? Fanboys. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and I was, and my introduction to Harry Potter was Gary Oldman, because I love Gary Oldman. So I, I saw um, Azkaban first. <coughs> 
And then, so I watched them all in like a weird way. So I saw that one and I was like, okay, now I gotta go back. So I went, saw the first two and then I skipped over and I hadn't seen all of them, like how we were supposed to see them. And I always like, I was like, and there's never enough hours in the day, I was like, I have to get around to do this. And then suddenly, oh my God, I'm playing a muggle in the movie. <laughs> so I was like, maybe it's a good idea that I don't know how this whole thing ends. <laughs> and uh, so I kind of stayed away from it. And then I made a pact with myself that as soon as I was done filming, <coughs> that I would go and have, have like a mini marathon for myself. <laughs> so I watched all the movies in a row and was like literally like, wiping a tear away about Snape <laughs> as I was sitting down to go see Cursed Child. Oh. Okay, that, that's a lot of Potter. Mm. <laughs> and that's like hours. And I, and I, I loved it, man. It was so cool to, to see the, the play like that after having just come off a marathon of the movies. Uh, and now being in it, and I always compare it to Star Wars mm. because they're two heroes journeys you know, which I love very much. Um, and that's a galaxy far, far away. And this is so much more tangible because it's right next door. It's this fantasy just beyond the veil, right beyond this wall here, is this other world. And um, so which I think makes it even um, cooler, more tangible, and the fact that uh, <clears throat> that kids have learned to read from this, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, makes it a very classy franchise. Mm -hmm. Which one is your favorite from Star Wars? <laughs> What's my favorite character from Star Wars? Yeah, your <coughs> character and your movie. Right, Han Solo, hands down. Oh. <laughs> Han Solo, hands down. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, yeah, and I always said that. Jacob was the hand solo of this movie because he's not a Jedi, yeah. right? Yeah. And yet he goes into the, the battle just like everybody else. So ha! <laughs> uh, who's your favorite? Oh, it's difficult. Yeah, you like yeah. the you like uh, obscure ones or something? Yeah, I like it. But actually, the huge fan's brother and like he even named my dog Luke. Oh, yeah. He, yeah, he really loved it. Yeah. Um, and for me, it's difficult to pick one because, like, I like the whole history how it's linked together. And um, as I said, there's a few different histories inside them. Yeah. Um, so it's difficult to, for me to pick one because um, I don't like to like one favorite character. And uh, but yeah, I pretty much like the whole uh, thing and. I also like Hans as well, and Chewbacca. Yeah, and Chewie, <laughs> my favorite. I love uh, Harrison Ford. So you... Indiana Jones had a big influence on me, too. Yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, you were a big fan of many big franchises before, and now you enter this world, yeah. and you have people dressing up as Jacob, as Queenie, mm -hmm. as nudes, tiny nudes coming on stage. Yeah. Uh, so cute, and man. you were also talking about, you know, so funny. being on Off-Broadway, yeah. and there is here a, a play that is Pops, that is Harry Potter of Broadway. Yeah. How does it feel to meet this entire world and see how all these people are doing around around your own job, around your own work? Oh, oh, how they're doing in the theater world? No, how does it feel for you to kind of suddenly discover, have all these people dressing up as you oh. while you used to see, you know, people yeah, dressed up as time, your heroes? Yeah, anytime I see yeah. Anytime I see anyone cosplaying or I see like a toy or something or like a coloring book or and I'm like, wow, that's my image, like they're and oh or, or any of the like uh, the uh, the fan art. So cool man. I just I just love it that it inspires more art. You know? More it it it, it uh yeah, it's just beautiful. Like the way I used to watch <coughs> Harrison Ford, Indiana Jones when I was a kid, 
and then to get to run from the erupt and imagine the erupt <laughs> boulder. I'm Indiana Jones. You know, that's, that's what it was in my head. I was like, oh, I'm a kid in the candy store. To be able to do that and then to say, wow, this, there might be some kid out there now who's watching Jacob and their favorite scene is the erupt scene or whatever. And then they do a movie down the line and they're like, I'm Jacob in the erupt scene. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I mean, this, it's beautiful. It's, it's what you, really what you want. You want to leave them mark, you know, you want, to, you, want to make, you want to do something that you feel like is making an influence, you know. Um, talking about that, you are wearing the Lumos t-shirt right now? Lumos. Yeah, so we saw the video which, in which you were uh, presenting the crowd, uh, crowdfunding, a good crowd rise for yeah. the next campaign. On uh, Facebook, yeah. Yeah, so uh, are you planning on being more involved in yeah. this and how do you, how, how do you want to However, they, they <laughs> need me. I'm available. You know, I want to really help. I think it's an excellent cause. Um, uh, I have two beautiful little girls, and it just speaks to my heart. Like, if <coughs> I would, I would want them to be able to. If anything, God forbid, ever happened to me, my wife, and. I'd want a structure put together where they wouldn't be lost in a, in a maze, uh, in like a trap, really. And what Lumos does is it puts the system together where you, the, the money, a lot of people ask you to give to the children, give to the children. That money doesn't go to the children a lot of the time. This, the money goes to getting the kid back to their, either their own family, because a lot of the reasons that people give their kids up for adoption is because they don't have enough money. It was so sad. And then they're, then they're just stuck in the system, in a system that wants to keep them there because they make money off of it. It's just disgusting. So Lumos is really a, uh, it's, it's what, the picture is great because it's, it's like a bright light in the middle of, you know, all this yeah, darkness going on with all these kids who, you know, if you, if you like children, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know it's, a, it's a good foundation <laughs> to be part of. And were you so um, surprised when you got asked to return for the sequel? Because the way it ends for Jacob, yeah. it's a bittersweet ending. You no, know, he's not sure. As you said in your panel, it's like a dream. Yeah. Uh, Newt travels the world, so it's not necessary that he might return to New York and that. So were you uh, pleasantly surprised? Well, I had a little glimmer of hope, um, mostly because I knew that because of the contract I signed, I knew that there were at least a couple movies that I was going to be involved in. And, uh, so I knew, I knew that there was a journey, I just didn't know what it was. And then I had that little glimmer of hope at the end of the movie yeah. where he, and he's making, he, he, he didn't get fully obliviated obviously, he's, he still has that remnant in his dream state that's coming out in his creativity, in his work. He's making all the little creatures with his, in his baking. So he is obviously still a little something, and then he sees her, and then, you know, how do you interpret that smile at the end? Yeah, I just thought, I thought it was a nice, that could have been a nice ending for him, that he gets his happy ending, and that's, maybe he's not in danger anymore. <laughs> oh, okay. That's kind of how I saw it, it's like, that's a nice way to, for, um, for Jacob and Queenie to kind of live happily ever after. Right, so there's a continuation. Yeah. Right. Instead of him maybe being thrust into danger again in sequels. <laughs> Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there's a dot, dot, dot at the end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, what was it like, just uh, kind of just being a part of uh, this 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 film? Because you, as you said, you got to do a lot of fun scenes, like the the magic dot, the of being running away from the boulder and that, uh, just kind of yeah. performing that mag the kind of magic tricks that. Uh, to do. Yeah, I got to um, play a character that was very much like myself, coming to work every day and just being in awe. Like, oh my God! I mean, get, how did they build that? And they, I got to do this. And, oh my, you know, so uh, I was Jacob, and and so um, when I came to wait, what was the question? I uh, just said coming to set and seeing everything being built and uh, what was it like just yeah, doing scenes like the the, um, 
you know, the bold, the bold person, sorry, and going down into the, uh, <coughs> and that it was, of, like, it was amazing, up. man. I, I, it was so magical, being, just being on set. I was just a kid in a, in a candy store. Like, what's, like, what, what, what for you? For your job, this is what you want to do? Yeah. This is, you, you found your purpose? Yeah. Okay, what's the biggest event that you could cover? Uh, uh it's funny saying if the you're Oscars at Justice League. Justice uh, Interviewing the cast of Justice League. Like, okay. It's funny saying that here. I'm, I'm interviewing the cast of Justice League. Mm. Like, that's what it feels like <laughs> when I go to work every day. I'm like, I'm tough to win, man. It's, that, so, it's just surreal. I feel like I'm in a dream. And what's the difference between the Harry Potter fans and, since you're a big Star Wars fan, the fans from Star Wars? Like, do you notice similarities? Do you notice a lot of differences? The similarities are um, the intricacies in, uh, it's obviously good versus evil. So you have all the, all the people who like to dress up like the good guys and all the people who like to dress up like the bad guys. And you have all the different categories. And, um, um, there aren't a lot of masks in the Harry Potter world where you can't see people's beautiful faces. That's what I've noticed. <laughs> it's a lot of people dressing up as their favorite houses, and they're just smiling and welcoming. And, you know, it's just like a big reunion every time I come to a con, and everyone's just like, welcome to the family. And it's just really lovely. Um, but I don't know what that feels like on the Star Wars. I would love to, <laughs> you know, be part of the Star Wars. That would just... Oh, yeah, fanboys. Well, that fanboys, very much right. right. Fanboys is... <laughs> To be part of that, to, mm. to have a, this like side movie that's part of the the, uh, the Star Wars universe, that's cool. Yeah. But I would love to play a, a character, dance solo or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, there's still time for Han Solo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're making a lot of movies. They have, yeah. <laughs> um, I was wondering, uh, in the first version of the of the film. Uh, Jacob had a fiance, Mildred, yeah. and she looks really similar to Queenie. So oh, okay. I was wondering, what do you think about that? And if you could talk to us a bit, a bit more about her mm -hmm. character and her relig uh, really relationship sorry, with Jacob. Yeah, um, that was a beautiful scene. That was, like one, that was like one of the first scenes I shot. The actress was lovely. David loved her. Um, but then you get into the editing room and it's just like this. <coughs> What they they needed to you needed to feel sorry for Jacob early on, and you already feel sorry for him as soon as Mr. Bingley says no. Mm -hmm. And that's what they realize. They don't need. And unfortunately, they just didn't need that scene, and she got you know the cutting room floor. Um, but uh, yeah, and she had a blondish kind of look. Yeah, the pink, uh, pink. The pink. Yeah, maybe it was like a you know oh, like a like a foreshadowing or something. I don't know. Um, yeah, she was there so that the audience would feel bad for me because she, she's just like, you didn't, you didn't get the, you didn't get the money for the bakery? Well, here's your ring! You know, it's like, what? <laughs> you know, it was very sad, but I, you know, like I said, they didn't need it. Okay. Yeah. That's sad. <laughs> okay. What do you like and dislike the most about Jacob? What I just like the most is that mustache. The mustache. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't work. It doesn't work anywhere else on set. We're starting to grow it now, are you? <laughs> it, doesn't work, it doesn't work anywhere else than on set, I should say, because if I, what did you say? We're starting to grow it now. No, I haven't. And yeah, you're I've, getting I've, I've, like I've had a week off, which is why I'm doing this stuff. So I've, I've let, anytime I have time to grow my beard in around my mustache, I do it. <laughs> because you know, it, it just. Unless I, unless I have like a suit, you know, and the, the hair and everything's perfectly coiffed. <laughs> like a maniac with just a mustache. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, but whatever. It is what it is. I got like a pit team. <laughs> they, and I make it like perfect. Uh, yeah. And then what I love, what do I love Yeah, most? what you like the most, yeah. I'm playing a character that is so close to me, it's, it's like I'm playing an ancestor or something. And to be able to do that on screen in such a big way, 
to be a character that you love so much. Yeah. Oh, man, that's like that's like a gift from the gods. I'm playing the perfect character that I could for myself. You couldn't have handcrafted this character better for like my aesthetic, for things that I like, the way you know. Uh, yeah, everything about it. Love the twenties, New York. So I just love the character so much. I think it shows. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And what was it like working with um, Eddie on uh, on set? Was he a lot of fun? He's the biggest jerk and <laughs> <laughs> he's the sweetest like, like I'm, you're laughing because hey, of course not he's like the most charming i would i would joke that i mean i i'm pretty sure this is my prediction that he's going to be the youngest uh actor to be knighted ever that's my prediction uh and you guys are like yeah maybe that could happen <laughs> uh yeah and he's just so lovely and he is so meticulous, and, and we, uh, I'm on the other side of the spectrum. He's on the, the, the you know, can say volumes with just a blink of his eye, and I'm over here going, hey, you know. <laughs> and then we come together, we work off each other, we learn from each other. It's just like so, it's such a cool mm -hmm. relationship. Um, and the, the relationship is so great. Another iconic, like you have Jacob and Queenie, and then you have uh, Jacob and Newt. I mean, that's like Sherlock Holmes and Watson. I mean, it's like <laughs> any of those. Or party. Yeah, mm -hmm. different uh, sized duos. I don't know, it's comedy, I thought, because there's a wonderful scene when he brings it down to the. Uh, there's a lot of comedy. Yeah, it's like. Oh, scene he... with the Niffler? I mean, that's, that's a scene out of the Marx Brothers, man. <laughs> you know, the Niffler's Harpo, uh, and we're chasing him around, like, uh, you know, but it's, it's, it's amazing. And was that a conscious decision by David Yates? What? To have that kind of 1920s comedy feel to it, because you know, in the 1920s, they aren't doing 1920s comedy, they're just doing oh, yeah. comedy. Uh, we definitely wanted to do an homage mm -hmm. to all of those early, beautiful, silent films, because this was the era, mm -hmm. and we took lines away as much as we could just to make think scenes silent. There's a lot of silent scenes in the movie. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah, my favorite favorite when he's uh, when uh, Newt walks down the uh, briefcase, yeah, and then it's kind of puts me up. So and classic, and it's, like, it's just silent. Classic, yeah. Uh, and then going in, going into the suitcase. <laughs> That's I love that. Bit. Got to play out so many. I mean, my character, I don't know if you noticed it, but I did it as many times. I think I think it's like maybe twice in the movie. But I did this like chaplain. And anytime I stopped, I would run and then go. <laughs> 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 you know? I would just, yeah. I would just, I would just put that everywhere. David was like, okay, Dad, enough with the skip. <laughs> I was like, it's going to get in the movie. <laughs> got it a couple times. Got it a couple times. Uh, but it was that kind of character. When, you know, when, when can you do that? And that kind of great homage to silent film icons. Mm -hmm. Are you excited for um, Jude Law coming into the film now? Very. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's cool. Got to meet him. Um, he's going to be amazing. Uh, he's got those those eyes. <laughs> you, know, you see him in person, you're just like, whoa. Those, those eyes aren't human, they're like the eyes of a lion or something. <laughs> yeah, he's looking through you. It's amazing. Uh, he's going to be great. It's another charming dude. Whatever he does, he's just like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. uh, I think it's great. I think it's going to be really cool. Filming's going swimmingly. I shot a bunch of scenes already. I'm so happy with them. Man. Um, yeah. This one has been really good. A lot of the first one I had a ton of pressure. Everyone, everyone did. I was like, is, is, is this gonna work? Where everyone's launching, you know? And now everyone's like, okay, so it works. And now we just have to, you know, make another one. And, and it, it, the, uh, I feel like the the pressure is off the um, the freshmen who are now sophomores now, you know. And then there's a lot of new faces. They're they're more worried about them, you know. Make sure that they. You know, it's like it's just like creating a baby or something. You know? it's just like, okay, just get make sure it walks. You know, and, and uh, it's 
It's really cool. Um, how different it is to like the first film was in New York. Now it's Paris. So, how is it to change scenery so much, change from the from the American continent to Europe, where the magic is different? Uh, how different it is to work? So? Oh, um, well, we're st still at least. Uh, at least I've been I've been shooting at uh, at the studio. Some people I think are, get to go to <coughs> Paris, but I don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, I wish I love Paris. Um, but it's kind of probably good because if I went, I'd probably gain about thirty pounds <laughs> <laughs> uh, just eating croissants and you know shock the show. Um, it's just methods. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're a baker. Oh, I'm French. I can relate. <laughs> <laughs> the first movie, man. I was I lived above this. Italian bakery, and that was the stupidest thing I ever did. <laughs> I, I woke up every morning just like floating out of my bed from croissant smell. <laughs> and then I would just have croissant Fridays. <laughs> just bring in croissants every <laughs> Friday. <laughs> Everyone gained so much weight as one. Um, so there I was. <laughs> 1976. <laughs> Popped out of my mother. <laughs> Where are we going with this? <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Expand on that. No. Like, yeah, you guys know how that works. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> we, we maybe a final question could be: you know, Jacob is a baker. What is your favorite pastry? It's oh. my favorite pastry. So that is a wonderful question. <laughs> um, I'm just going to say what comes to mind first. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Entenmann's, which is like, have you ever heard of Entenmann's? <laughs> no, I guess this is an American thing. They had these amazing donuts, and they had <laughs> they had these crumb. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Crumb top donuts, yeah. chocolate crumb top donuts. Mm -hmm. With the confectioner sugar, <laughs> there was enough confectioner sugar on that to like swamp the, the cafe du Monde. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> New Orleans. Yeah. yeah. So the, so I would eat. <laughs> I would eat. I would take a, a glass, a tall glass. I was probably six, and I would break several donuts into that into the glass so that it reached the top. <clears throat> Okay, that's a lot of donuts. <laughs> and then I poured chocolate milk on that. Okay. That's so leverage for a six year old. <laughs> Drink that down in about 20 seconds. <laughs> and then just run around in <laughs> 20 minutes. And then just pass out, fall asleep. Have the best nap in the world. <laughs> I highly recommend it. <laughs> Homemade. Thank you so much. This is a good one. Now, the magic trick. I always wanted to do this, right? I know. <laughs>